Howdy folks, so a teardown today of uh, a kitchen appliance. So this is the Ninja um, sort of, it's a blender, okay? They, they call it some sort of fancy food thing, but it's just a basically, it's a, a weird upside down blender. So uh, you've got this uh, container and uh, this thing sits on top of it and you push the button down and it blends all of your stuff and you know, nothing super fancy. I am not going to review this. Um, basically, I was in the market for an inexpensive blender, so I said anything under 50 Canadian dollars um, would be good. And uh, surprisingly, most of the blenders, uh, if not all the blenders under, under $50 are complete and utter garbage. And so this seemed to have the best reviews, so I bought it. And as it turns out, this thing is actually uh, a decently good blender. I haven't had any major problems with it, so, um, you know, and I've used it quite a bit. And anyway, I was going to clean it, because of course you can see there's some splatter up here, and I thought, well, if I'm going to clean it, I might as well uh, take it apart, um, considering that it's clearly not defective. So let's void the warranty and uh, see what's inside this powerhead unit. So, um, on the bottom here, uh, whether you can read that or not, um, it is Intertech certified, of course, only the finest things are certified by Intertech and not UL. Um, so this is uh, basically just North American mains and it's rated for 400 watts. Um, and I put this on my power meter, I wasn't able to get it up to 400 watts, but of course I didn't stall out the motor, so you know I don't really know if that's the stall power or um, I don't know how they rate that 400 watts. But uh, doing sort of frozen blending and stuff like that, I wasn't able to get it that high. And there's just some uh, random warning text and anything. So there's no other really, there's really no other settings on this. It's just one big button. It's on or off and that's it. And then you know, if you have to pulse it, you gotta do that yourself and everything. Of course, double insulated appliance, just got a polarized mains plug. And of course, really short cord as you would all expect. And so there are two Torx screws embedded way down in there. And uh, my screwdriver, with any luck, just barely fits. So while I'm unscrewing this, I'll take the time to note that if you don't see any ads on my channel, it's because YouTube or Google has uh, disabled my AdSense account uh, because they claim that I clicked on my own ads, which is uh, impossible because I use a uh, ad blocker on YouTube. I only uh, whitelist the channels that I actually watch, and so my channel remains blacklisted. So well, for this exact very reason that I literally cannot click my own ads because I don't see my own ads. Uh, let alone I don't watch my own videos. So, anyway, um, that's why there's no more ads, um, and I can't appeal it for two months, so, whatever. Uh, so anyway, the screw's out, it seems to just lift off. Okay, that looks like the interesting bit, so we'll start with the not interesting bit. So, this is the button assembly. Um, so, there's actually a spring in this. And they just seem to be using three big pan head screws down there as the uh, the stops. And then of course this is the this is the big post that must press on a switch in here. Um, the uh, mold looks kind of messed up. There's lots and lots of marks on the inside of this. I don't know if you can see them in the light, but it's a very rough uh, rough casting. But uh, anyway. No, no material marks, so I'm not quite sure what that is made out of. But anyway, spring just fell out of here. So this is the switch assembly. So obviously that, that rod presses down on a switch down here. And uh, it must be that, that black thing right there. And that's what turns it on. Now this thing has an interlock. Um, you'll notice that uh, it, when you plug this in and you don't have this on top of the uh, the blender cup thing, uh, you push the button, nothing happens. And uh, so I noticed that there's this there's this plastic pet, uh, pin, and so this, of course, gets pushed up when um, when you put it on uh, one of the two cups it comes with, and uh, then it works. So if I push this, oh, that's cool, actually. So when you push this, it actually brings the entire switch assembly up. So the switch rides in this piece of plastic. And so obviously this post inside the cup is only long enough to press the switch if the switch is already up here. So they've basically just got a pin from the top and a pin from the bottom that compress the switch together. Um, 
So it's a very, so rather than having two separate switches, they've got the, uh, the interlock with just one switch. So that's, of course, a nice cost-saving measure. I don't really have a big problem with that. Um, I, I think that's actually quite a novel solution. I like that. So um, we've got the mains comes in here, and it goes around this uh, screw with a little plastic washer on it, and it goes around that. So that's, that's actually very nice strain relief. Um, you know, there's nothing to prevent it from bending here, but uh, there's no way you're going to be able to pull this out of here. Uh, that's very tight. I like that. And then they've got some crimp terminals. Uh, one goes under this white wire, which goes up to the motor, and then the other one goes under this red wire, which goes to the switch. And so obviously then it's going to go through the switch and then back up to the motor. Um, you notice that the gauge of this red wire is actually substantially thinner than the other wires. Um, this is just that link between the switch and the mains. Um, so I would say this wire is probably, you know, 20 or even 18 gauge possibly, and this is more like 22 or 24 gauge. So um, I'm, I'm, I don't like how thin that wire is if it's supposedly rated at 400 watts. I mean, it hasn't caused any problems yet, but I would have liked that all the wires be at least this thick. So that is a, that's a, I don't like that. That's a bad sign. The soldering looks okay. I mean, it's just two tabs on either side. Doesn't look too bad there. Uh, the motor itself is mounted on this plastic plate, which has these little rubber um, sort of shock mounts. And they are, they are compliant. They do move. Um, they're pretty tight, but they do move. So uh, they've, they've at least tried to, you know, deal with uh, vibration somehow. They've got little guides in the plastic that they've clipped the wires in to stop them from flapping around. Um, they didn't do that to uh, this red wire again. It seems this red wire is just uh, sort of flapping around here. It has to be able to move, of course, because this switch moves. Same thing with the black, black wire, but yeah, they could have probably clipped that on somehow or done that a little bit better. And then, of course, we've got the motor itself, which uh, looks relatively nice. 120 volts, 60 hertz, um, 170103. That could be a date code, so it could be uh, January um, or uh, April um, or March, sorry. I'm not quite sure. And uh, you can look that up. Probably won't find anything, though. So uh, we've got the... Black comes up here, and we've got this uh, this piece that is attached to it uh, that's clipped onto the field coil here. And so my guess is that that would be uh, your uh, thermal fuse. So basically, if this coil gets too hot, then this fuse blows open, and it cuts off power to this brush, and the motor stops running. So this is probably a one-time thermal fuse. Uh, and that's how they're getting their, their safety, um, which is uh, perfectly acceptable. They've just wrapped it in some plastic, and then they've uh, you know, put a metal band on here. They've put some zip ties on the, uh, the other wire here. They've got that uh, fiberglass sleeving around the, the connections to the coils, um, so I'm not, not complaining about that there. Of course, it's a brushed motor. Um, there's, a, you know, there's some... some uh, carbon on the commutator bars, nothing too bad yet. Uh, you'll notice that there is no epoxy um, down there on the, uh, the, uh, the, the wires as they're terminated into the comm bars. So, uh, you know, likely that those will fail with time. This is probably not going to be a, a high hour motor. Um, it's not going to live for too many running hours. Uh, but of course, as a blender, you generally don't use it for very many hours. So, they probably factored that into its its lifespan. Actually, I just noticed there is actually a fan down here. It's very small. It is a metal blade fan. Um, and, uh, of course, it's a single directional fan. Of course, this thing only goes in one direction. And so, uh, yeah, that's... That is, uh, that is really tiny. But I, I, I would have expected that fan to be a little bit bigger. You can actually see that there's a little bit of black gunk that's been thrown out onto this plastic, probably from a bearing or uh, 
possibly... I mean, it's probably from the brushes. Is it from the brushes? I kind of, actually, I kind of doubt that, because that would have to get, that would have to travel pretty far. I suspect that might be just crap from the bearing or something down here that's flung out. And, uh, anyway, so let's take one of the brushes out of here. So this has got this little uh, copper clip here, or copper-plated clip, and this is where it's going to spring out at me, right? I'm never going to get this back. Okay, so it's just a... I can't tell if that is a solid copper brush holder. Not quite sure. I'm sure someone will correct me. And so here is our brush. Uh, sorry, here is our brush. So we've got the copper braid in there. Looks like a brass stud or something. And uh, the brush does not have a terribly great wear pattern on it. Um, as you can see, it's not covering the full face of the brush, but again, you know, I've only had this for like a month, so, um, you know, it hasn't seen more than, you know, 15 minutes of probably continuous blending, so uh, I suspect that, of course, would get better over time. I don't see any copper in this brush, so it likely is just a, just a, a standard brush, nothing, nothing special. And we'll see if I can get this back on without losing it. Cool. So yeah, that's pretty much all that's in this. I mean, it. I wasn't expecting more than just a motor and uh, a switch. But uh, honestly, uh, I would have to say for, for the $50 that this thing cost, um, it's it's been a, a good blender um, for the, you know, like I said, the first month I've had it. And I like the design other than this wire. Um, if this wire was thicker and it had some better retention, I would say this is actually quite a nice design. I think this switch mechanism is quite novel. Um, we'll see how it holds up, but I, I think I think the, the construction of it, they've used lots of fasteners everywhere. Um, you know, they've used metal washers and I, I mean, it's, it's got all the requisite safety or all that really, all that it really needs. And uh, the plastics seem to be of decent thickness and everything. So yeah, um, that's what's inside. The, uh, the the ninja blender thing. I don't actually know what marketing calls this, but I'm just going to call it the ninja. So anyway, hopefully that was interesting. And as always, thanks for watching.